There's quite a lot of dubbing in Tracy Beaker Returns, but this is one of the more noticeable occasions where it's used. There's a huge disconnect between what's being said and what's being shown on screen. Yes, it's Liam. Oh. He shoots! What was that? My exact reaction to Liam's absolutely awful kick is like he wanted to lose the ball in the trees. Also, I'm not sure anyone would question what a police siren was. They're a relatively common occurrence. A better line would have been, that was loud. This actually looks like real money. Well done, prop department. Good point. Let's get the stuff in so I come on. Take the ball with you. This is the sort of thing I do to wind up my sister, so I believe Tracy not questioning this further. Gina though, Gina is right there. Why is she not frantically asking Toby what he's doing? Carmen, what the hell are you doing? So you're from the police? Gus is the sort of person that would be able to tell these are fake. Have you come to arrest Tracy? No. Have you come to arrest Liam? No, it's nothing like that. Look, can we just speak to someone in charge? This man is trying to act. I wonder who it belongs to. Us. Find us keepers. I think the more believable scenario would be the five of them disagreeing over how much they can keep without it seeming too obvious they've taken some. Even Liam is clever enough to know that there will be lots of people looking for this money and I don't truly believe that he would want to keep it all. Some, definitely, but they're all worldly wise enough to know that they can't get away with hiding £750,000 without eventually getting caught. We can't cut everyone in. Why not? Less money for us, Dobro. Carmen's a Tory. Seriously though, that's still over £75,000 each if you split it across all 10 kids. The real reason not to cut everyone in would be to keep the secret. One of them escaped with a bag which contained a large amount of money. Oh, we caught him later, but the money was gone. This fake story, and these two actually being real coppers, makes more sense than what really happened. Meaning, of course, that we never really find out. I really love the change in pace, music and focus for this tiny moment. It allows us to truly look at what we're being shown and tell that it's significant. It's a wonderful bit of concise and effective storytelling. Seeing how much Frank loves and cares about his granddad allows us to completely understand how he feels when the man dies. This five second segment has so much depth to it, removing three sins because I truly think it's superb. We can go to Disneyland, we can go quad biking. No, we're not spending this money. The visual metaphor here is great. Johnny is laundering money by putting it in a laundry basket. Saul Goodman should take some notes. Oh, why not? Because you'll go waste it on something stupid. No, I wouldn't. One word. Sheep. Her name was Byronica Bellany by Bibula Safi Bun the First, and she was worth every single penny. Show some respect, Johnny Taylor. This fart sound effect is awful and its placement is unfunny. I heard the sirens and... And? And, and then they stopped. Yeah. Smooth. I don't think they'll suspect a thing now. It's alright, Carmen. Don't be scared. Oh, it's okay. I'm not. Carmen wasn't the farter then. Personally, my money's on Johnny. So if you see anything suspicious, tell Mr Mulligan. Milligan. Sorry. Why is this a running gag? Let me write down our number for you. Oh. Can I borrow this? Sonny? I'm adding two sins. One for each of these stock bad guys. Not even Gus's fabulous expression can make me change my mind. Okay. Maybe it can. Right, uh, get Mike. Stay there. Jessie, Jessie, don't! Mike! Don't move! Silly. Put down your weapon. 
What a way to start a relationship. I got here a little bit early, so I was just listening to some music. So rather than waiting outside the front door, Seth thinks it's a good idea to creep through the back garden trees and scare the child who he's responsible for keeping safe. Why Mike thought this totally normal is beyond me. Elm Tree has some security concerns, clearly. Ooh, if that guy's in a gang, how do I join? Stay away from him! Did... Did Sapphire just call Seth hot? Calm down! Calm down! Uh, Toby, uh, say hello to Seth. He's your new social worker. Hello, Toby. Even the music realises Seth must be dodgy. So... So me. Genuinely though, why are Seth's mannerisms so menacing? He's a red herring, but a red herring has to have a logical explanation behind it in order to work. Seth being portrayed as dodgy through the music and his actions doesn't make sense when he's actually an alright bloke. It's just a mess. I suggest Seth that you should try smiling when talking to Toby. Might make your job slightly easier. I'm removing three sins for the nerve of the production team to put an episode of the story of Tracy Beaker in the background of the scene. Sure, it makes no sense and creates a huge hole in the space-time continuum, but I don't care. It's worth it to see Nathan being a disaster once again. What are we going to make and Gina? We're going back to the dumping ground. We're going to get our own place. I don't really buy that Liam would think this would pan out well, what does he think Mike and Gina would do if he and Frank never returned? Liam is familiar enough with the police by now to know how it would go down. Oh, come on, let's go diving for burgers. I like this line. It reveals that scamming, to Liam, isn't really about money. It's about spending time with friends and escaping feelings of worthlessness. I had a pet hamster when I was a kid. Oh, that little fella meant the world to me. So my dad sat on him. Hairy pancake. I thought social workers weren't allowed tattoos. It's not exactly encouraged. Can we just keep it our little secret? If it is actually against rules and regulations in the Tracy Beaker multiverse for social workers to have tattoos, it isn't in the real world. Then Kill Dog's request to keep it a secret is sort of concerning. I wouldn't agree with such a rule, but the man shouldn't be using his position of power to persuade Toby. Nice thinking, mate. We could do with a few servants in our pad. Not for... for Grandad and me. What, you want to go live with him? Another good scene. Up to this point, wanting money has only been depicted as an entirely selfish desire. But actually, it's important to have money in order to have a decent quality of life. Frank wanting to use his share to look after his granddad, although it wouldn't work practically, Shows us just how kind of a person he is. You found the money, didn't you? What money? Hats off to Amy Lee Hickman for believably acting as someone who cannot act. Well, I have to admit, actually washing money probably wasn't going to work. Girlfriend? One of them. Classy. Don't get involved, Tracy. I'm begging you. Seth leaving his phone, which doesn't seem to have a password lock, unattended in a house with ten children in it, is too big a contrivance for my liking. So do it according to age. The older you are, the more you get. Did Sapphire learn nothing from Ferris? Surely she's mature enough by now to realise that there's no way they could actually keep the money a secret. Wait. Who put the money in here and when? Just now, Sapphire was sharing it out with everyone. Was there a deleted scene that covered this? If the door is wobbling like that, it's definitely easy to break out of there. SA10 HMG, back to police car registration. It's not very helpful to know the car's number plate when they've got so much money. Who's to say it isn't a fake number plate or registered in a false name? Surely, if these criminals are clever enough to get £750,000, they're also clever enough to have multiple cars? Sorry Gus, I don't like sinning you. 
Tracy. Seth is totally fine after being locked up. Shame. I've spoken to the police and they've caught the couple copying the coppers and recovered the cash. They gave the money back. Yeah, thanks to you. Uh, Tracy did the right thing, yeah? Uh, apart from locking Seth in the outhouse, obviously. I fail to see what Tracy did wrong there, quite honestly. Despite the fact that the couple copying the coppers weren't really coppers, they're still credited as Detective Sergeant and Detective Constable. I've spoken to the police and they've caught the couple copying the coppers and recovered the cash. 